Welcome back everyone. I finally get to talk about my daily MacBook that I use almost every day I would say and that is actually the 2015 MacBook Pro Retina and it's funny because a lot of people assume that I have like the latest and greatest all the time that I have like the newest MacBook every time and every day I use the newest thing a 16 inch and iMac Pro and all that Mac Pro. I don't use any of those things if I'm being honest. My daily iMac that I use every single day is a 2015 iMac and I use a 2015 MacBook Pro Retina that I used to use as a daily machine but now I don't use it anymore that often but I can definitely tell you these MacBooks for some reason that 2015 lineup of Apple that year was just killer for them and I feel like these things are extremely timeless and every time I pick up my 2015 Retina MacBook Pro and I use it I'm like what could Apple do to make me switch from this one to a different one you know what I mean the performance is still there the battery is kind of weird I mean that's probably my only downside of it but really every single thing about this MacBook is just still so it just feels so good to me and I don't really understand like I know the 16 inch MacBook that's probably the only one I would go to right now just because of that studio built-in microphone but other than that this 2015 MacBook is still a killer machine in my opinion now there's two different models as you guys know there's that 13 inch model and that 15 inch model now lucky for you i've personally owned both i've owned both the 13 inch model and that 15 inch model as my daily machines and i'll start off with that 13 inch model they're both pretty much the same in terms of the build quality and port selection which honestly is kind of dumb if you're getting that top tier model there should be more ports but whatever this is 2015 five years ago there's nothing we can do about it around the whole entire body though they're built very very similar so on the top you have that apple logo it you know lights up and everything which a lot of people freak out about which i'm not really too sure why and on the left of the machine you have that magsafe port two thunderbolt ports so the older ones not the USB-C ones and then the old usb 3.0 port right here and on the right you have another usb 3 port an hdmi port and an sd card and and honestly that sd card slot is the one thing where i probably could not go and update to another macbook for i just use that sd card slot so much in my daily life and for me to actually go and you know upgrade to that 16 inch or a different macbook just to carry a dongle around i just really don't like i've owned those usb c macbooks i've owned the regular macbook and i've owned those macbook pros and I just don't like it to be honest i don't like carrying dongles i mean i like the macbooks they're extremely nice the ones with the touch bars and everything but i just don't like carrying dongles around the usb 3.0 ports whatever these ones are i can probably get by with i don't really use them all that much to be honest i mean besides plugging in my mics to make these videos and stuff but that sd card is just something that i just use on a daily basis and i would hate to have to plug into a dongle every single time to do that and on this 15 inch macbook that i have which is my daily machine i don't have to do that which just saves me so much time time and so much effort and that's one reason why i actually like this macbook so much in 2020 just because of that port selection you know we have at the max four USB C ports on those macbooks but on this one we have so many more ports and we don't even have to give up a port just for the sd card so that's something that i really really do like about this machine now opening it up as you guys know we have either that 13.3 inch model or that 15 inch model and what i can tell you is is that this specific model that i have and i'll just go ahead and kind of push them together for the 13 inch 15 inch these models of these screens are so nice they have such a vivid displays and i recently looked i mean i've owned those 13 inch models and other 16 inch models and everything and those panels might be better overall but this panel still looks very very good in 2020 and i'll give you a little hint if you actually go and this will actually help out the screen calibration to me and i actually do like this if you go to your you know system preferences and you actually go to the display settings you can actually change the calibration of this display if you go into color now my my favorite one to click is apple rgb that's the one thing i always like and for some reason i've always liked this one for every single macbook i've ever owned so there's a little tip for you if you want your screen to look even better but the panel still looks really really nice and i've seen those older macbook pros the ones that were fat with like the old ethernet ports and everything and those displays were just not good at all but this display is still extremely vivid it still looks really really nice and everything so now below that you have that keyboard which is that older one and it's funny because apple switched to those other ones the butterfly ones and then they eventually switched back to kind of like these ones in a way they're not fully these ones were pretty close and we have that force touch trackpad at the bottom and this was the first time we saw a force touch trackpad i do believe i think this one came out before the macbook the smaller one and this trackpad is extremely nice it's the one thing that's not dated this machine at all and makes this machine feel so much newer than what it is i'll give you an example 
I've owned the 2014 MacBook as well. I used that one for a very, very long time. And I never really liked that trackpad, but I didn't really notice it. You know what I mean? Like you use the machine for a while. You just don't really notice it. But when you switch over to a MacBook like this or one that has a force touch trackpad, you realize how cool and how, you know, futuristic it feels when you're actually clicking a force touch thing and not necessarily a button every time. So that's something that I really, really do like. I don't even notice it anymore, but it's something that's really, really awesome for these type of machines. Now that pretty much covers it up in the outside the externals and everything now in the inside this is where i'm probably going to lose some people because i'm so bad at these things there's a couple different models there's so there's the dual core models and those quad core models now i had a dual core model before i switched to the quad core which is that 15 inch one and when i had that dual core i had a pretty good experience overall you know it had a hard drive in it too which could have probably explained the ending of my 2015 13 inch run for these macbooks but throughout my time, I mean, to give you an example, I edited almost every single one of my videos last year up until I think like September. I edited all those videos on a 2015 MacBook and, and that was that 13 inch one. And I had a pretty good time. You know, that was my main machine. I did work on it. I did my homework on it. I did these videos on them and it handled pretty fine i had I think i had the 128 gig model for the beginning of the year i think i had the 256 gig model all throughout and my current one is still 256 but i have a terabyte in my imac and beginning of the year i had about the 8 gigabyte model which is pretty crazy because 8 gigs of ram that's really nothing then i eventually bought i think halfway through the year the 16 gigabyte model and that ended up doing me very very well i definitely saw the speed increase and being able to hold more apps and i think app opening speeds were much faster too but towards the ending i saw that my macbook was kind of aging especially considering the fact that i was you know uploading more and i had more files on my machine i was just running out of storage all the time but then i did some research and i found out that my macbook could potentially have been having a failing hard drive which was something that i was really scared about so what i did was towards the ending of that the performance was getting slow and everything i eventually switched over to a 15 inch quad core macbook that had an ssd inside of it and i'm going to tell you right now the performance boost that I saw from going that 13 inch to that 15 inch one was crazy. You got those quad core processors, but on top of that, you had that SSD. And I'm telling you right now, if you're going to get a 15 inch MacBook, get one that has an SSD in it. There's no way you should get one without a hard drive. Really any laptop or anything you're going to get, definitely get the SSD model inside of it. That makes a huge difference. On my iMac, I had a hard drive in it, but I switched it out for an SSD and that totally changed the whole entire experience with it. I'm telling you guys right now, I would highly recommend you getting an SSD in your MacBook. Now, what I will also say is that my overall performance right now, you know, I'm filming this video on this MacBook. I'm going to edit this video on this MacBook. And so far, I've owned this for, you know, about like seven months now or whatever. It's held up very well. There's really not too much anything wrong with it. It really does everything I throw at it. And to give you an example, like I said, I added all my videos on these MacBooks and it really isn't a slow machine at all. And like, like I said, I look at these newer MacBooks, you know, the 16 inch ones and even the older 15.4 inch ones. I don't really have a reason to go and upgrade to those ones because this machine still handles everything I throw at it. It literally does everything. Really the only downside is the storage, but that's not that i can choose and i can get one that has more storage options on it and i can expand the storage with those usb ports so there's really not that big of a reason for me to go and update and i can tell you right now the 2015 macbook in 2020 is an extremely good machine whether you get the 13 inch or the 15 inch one get one that has an ssd and you're pretty much set i'm pretty sure you can install an ssd in these two so that's something i would highly recommend now i'm going to end off with the battery life the battery life on this macbook is pretty decent you know i'm not going to say it's you know crazy good but it's not crazy bad either. I think it's pretty average. So right now I've been using this MacBook for about like a couple, maybe not even an hour. I would say about like 35 minutes of the screen being on. And right now it is on 83%, which, you know, isn't a super low percentage, but for some reason for the top tier, it usually trickles down from like 100% down to like 80% and then down from 80, it just kind of goes down much faster for me. I don't know why that happens. The battery is pretty decent too. It only has, I think it has less than 100 charge cycles on it. So I'm not really too sure what the reason for that is. But I can tell you at the end of the day, this MacBook handles really everything I throw at it. If I take it on a trip with me for a couple hours and I come back, like it's definitely going to handle everything I throw at it. It's going to be perfectly fine. I do all my projects on this. Anytime I Photoshop something, I do pretty heavy Photoshop sometimes. It handles really everything I throw at it. Maybe the only downsides, like I said, are the battery. And sometimes this thing does heat up quite a bit. The fans ramp up, especially as almost every single time I export a video, the fans ramp up like crazy, which isn't a bad thing. But I'm I'm kind of not used to it because you know on my 2015 macbook before it would happen then it would go away and on my imac 
I never had that experience before, so it really never really bothered me. But every time I use the MacBook, I just remember that, oh my God, the fans are going to ramp up. But really, those are really, really small things. And those are just like me whining about it. I can tell you at the end of the day, this MacBook Pro, the 15 inch models or the 13 inch models from 2015, the Retina ones are going to do you so well in the long run. And I would highly recommend you to pick them up in 2020 if you need to, you know, if you have a little bit more money to spend, I mean, you can get those newer ones with the butterfly keyboards, but I wouldn't recommend it. You can always get that 16 inch model or that new MacBook Air as well. But this one is still a very good machine at the end of the day so that's really pretty much it if you want to pick one of these up i'll leave them linked down in the description you can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time but that is pretty much it if you guys have any other questions or anything leave them down in the comment section below hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys could hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel all those links are linked down below i'd really appreciate if you guys could check it out more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out to them